strippers, tanks, and now RDTAs. This is what we're going to be taking a look at tonight. The Aromamizer RDTA version 2, right here on my vaping place. Hey everybody, before we get going on this today, I want us to take a minute and talk to you about this. Have you gone over to august8th.org and sent out your email to your state senators and your congressional representative? If you haven't, please do so. For your sake, for my sake, for every vapor in the United States' sake. Because on August 8th, 2016, the FDA regulations are going to ki start kicking in and they are going to become more and more draconian as time goes on. Now, the lawsuits that are going through the court system right now, they may very well pan out, but we cannot count on them. We cannot count on those lawsuits actually coming to fruition in the way that we would like them to come through. Not only that, we cannot count on them winning in our favor. You go into a courtroom, you're rolling the dice. You really don't know what the outcome is going to be. You really don't. Please go to august8th.org. Use the facilities that CASA has made, left there for you to get in touch with your state senators to send out an email to them that you can customize the way that you want to let them know what vaping means to you and to let them know that you want them to support H.R. 2058 and the Cole Bishop Amendment to the Agricultural Bill. Please go over there. Let your representative, your congressional representative know. Let your state senators know. Let them know that if they don't support this, you are not only going to not support them, but you will not be able to support them because they are not listening to you. Okay, please go over there now or well, not right now, but after the video is over, go over there and please, please sign up with CASA and send out these emails. If you've done it already, go there again. Send out another email. It's not going to hurt. It can only help. Please, for your sake, for my sake, for every vapor in the state's sake, go to augustaith.org and send out those emails. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Nice of you to join me tonight. Thanks for coming. Um, okay. Yes, I did get rid of the beard. Um, it has been for the last three or four days... 90 plus degrees here in North Jersey and it has been like oh my bloody god bad um the beard was getting a little bit too much but yeah I, I think I'll have it back for the for the winter time but for right about now this is a whole hell of a lot cooler also please before I go any further, forgive me, I've got two fans on, so there's probably a lot of background noise. That's this one over here and another one I got in the window over there. If I didn't have those fans on, I would be melting like a puddle of butter right about now. What we're going to be looking at tonight is going to be this. The Steam Crave Aromamizer RDTA version 2. There's a couple of differences between the version 1 and the version 2. Um, no more vape bands on here. No more little rubber colored vape bands that look so damn stupid it's not even funny. And this has got a velocity style deck on here which is just so damn much easier to build on than the two po standard two post dripper of yesteryear with its little screws and everything else that Phillips head screws and everything. Yeah. It's so much better to build on. It's so much easier. The If you're going to go out and buy a tank, pretty much all the tanks nowadays are coming out with 
velocity style decks because like I said they're, they're just so damn much easier to work with it's not even funny so if you are looking at a tank and it doesn't have a velocity deck on it seriously unless it's something that absolutely you have to have just for whatever reason it, I it, maybe it everything else about it floats your boat well then by all means go out and get it but if you're going to get a dripper or you're going to get a rebuildable tank get one that has a velocity style deck on it it oh please it is just so much easier okay i'm like extremely tired here so i have been trying to get this this review out now for the last two weeks the continuing saga of the bathroom and the plumber is yet again this weekend rearing its ugly head now we've got a, still got the leak going downstairs into the downstairs apartment but it's not coming from the shower head this time it looks like it's probably coming from the drain in the shower so we have had i have had to take a whole hell of a lot less showers that I normally would be taking in this kind of weather. And it's just like, I mean, the heat's just like, and the humidity is like draining me. So if I sound like I'm about ready to fall out here, it's because, <laughs> yeah, I am. I was able to grab a shower a couple of minutes ago. I, I know this is totally off topic here, but I, I, I just need to talk about this for a minute or two and explain to you the, and apologize to you for the reasons why I have not been able to get out this, this review a lot sooner. Um, the next review, which is for the um, Steam Crave Aroma Miser Dripper, is going to I'm going to try to get that out next week. Um, fingers crossed. Legs crossed, eyes crossed, the whole nine yards. Hopefully we can get this thing resolved this week so I can get to work and be in a condition that I can, you know, at least be able to function properly. And not only that, but I can have a weekend that I can actually do some work here. Let alone, rather than just sit around waiting for a plumber and then having to be there while the plumber's working on his stuff and all that other good stuff. So, yeah. All right. Enough of me waffling around here. Um, let's go down to the build deck and take care of looking at this thing. Um, this this little section here is already five minutes long, and it, the build cam is going to be about 20, 30 minutes long. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be one of those kind of videos, but you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. See you down below decks. Watch your, watch your cabeza on the overheads, okay? See you down there. Okay, folks, here we are down on the build deck. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at today is this, the Aroma Miser RDTA version 2 by Steam Crave. This is exactly what I got in the package from uh, Steam Crave when I ordered this from them. Um, we have here uh, the Aroma Miser tank itself, and it came with two additional coil decks. One is a single stainless steel coil. The other one is a dual stainless steel OCC coil. But we will be taking a look at these in a few minutes. Okay, we'll just put them off to one side. Um, the reason why we're going to take a look at them is not only so that way you can see what they are, but also you can see how Steam Crave actually built these things th uh, themselves, and thereby how they suggest that you should build the deck itself. Okay? But we're jumping ahead of the game here, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. Now this is the packaging here. This is the front of the package. It has a little does da, uh, da, 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 I'm doing good today. It has a little bit of a diagram on here showing you how the airflow for this thing actually works. Um, this side here 
has the model number, which is the SC201 stainless steel. This is the six milliliter version. This side we have the steamcrave.com website and designed by BJ with the logo. On this side we got the logo and this side here, same thing. On the back we have a brief description of the aroma miser itself, what it's all about. Also it has the appropriate patent number notifications, uh, you, uh, SKU code, the usual collection of uh, CE warnings, FCC, recyclable, ROHS compliant, not for use on, by people under 18, not for use by pregnant women. And of course the Steam Crave scratch and check with the serial number on here. As I said, I got this directly from Steam Crave, but I wanted to be sure I knew exactly how this thing worked in the first place. So you know, how you would go about checking these things to make sure that these things are the real thing, just in case somebody should ask me in the future, I'd be able to tell them and help them out. Okay, so let's take a look here. So I'm gonna open this up and this is what we got inside. The tank itself, as you can see, Steam Crave Aromamizer RDTA version two. Um, we'll get more to this in a minute or two, so we're just gonna put that off to the other side. Let's see what else we have in the packaging here. All right, we have a 1.25 millimeter Allen key or Allen wrench is whatever way you want to call it. An extra glass for the tank section here. And we have the little extra packet of goodies in here. Now, this little packet of goodies has got uh, extra O-rings in here. It's got pretty much two of everything, including the grub screws. There are actually eight grub screws in here, which is two extra sets of grub screws. So you actually get two extra sets of grub screws, two extra sets of the silicone O-rings in here. So should something start leaking, you got extras. Good thing Steam Crave is one of the few companies I've seen that gives you actually two sets of the grub screws and two sets of the O-rings. And everybody else just gives you one set. If you need to use one, you're still up the creek without a paddle, without it, but good O on you guys. All right, so underneath here we have just the little sponge foam cutouts that keeps everything in place and keeps it from rattling around. And in the bottom here, we have a Steam Crave sticker. Uh, you can put this on your phone, you can put it on your laptop, you can put it on your monitor. Uh, if you put it anyplace else, I really don't want to know about it. Okay, and in here we also have the uh, user's manual, which gives you a brief product introduction, tells you all, something about the product, uh, uses 304 food grade stainless steel, Delrin, Pyrex, uh, peak insulators, gives you a list of what you'll find in the box, uh, gives you an exploded diagram of what all the pieces look like and wh where exactly they fit together in the whole mess. So. There's actually not quite, there's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that make up this thing. So, yeah, it's not actually too bad. Uh, compared to the K-Fund V4, <laughs> this is a piece of cake. Shows you about how to adjust the airflow, uh, gives you a diagram of how the airflow works versus a standard tank, and of course, uh, the usual advertising on exactly, you know, all the different uh, products that make up the Steam Crave line as of the time that this was produced. So, yeah, we're gonna put this back in the bottom of the box here. We're gonna put this in here. Put this back in here nicely so that way we can put these in and they won't get lost, strayed, stolen, or hurt. We're gonna leave this Allen key out because we are going to need it. And we're gonna get this out of the way. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at the guest of honor here. All right. Um, Mm. I am not prepared at all for this tonight. Let me just get out my calipers here so we can get a good measurement on this thing. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this thing. Bottom size is 23 millimeters. Exactly. Well, a little over 23 millimeters. Since this isn't digital, I can't give you an exact number, but it's just a hair over 23, like 23.0 something or other. Um, top to bottom, not 
including the drip tip and not including the 510 connector we are looking at 48.12 48.25 48 48.26 48.26 close enough for government work okay so yeah this is a uh, it's a little bit bigger than the quote standard size tank but it's also let me just put this back here out of the way so it doesn't get broken it's a little bit larger than the quote standard size tank you know your standard 22 millimeter ish tanks but it's not all that big so um this should fit on pretty oh excuse me pretty much just about everything so as you can see here when i took this off this is a single o-ringed delrin uh 510 size drip tip single o-ring fits right in here very nicely it's a little on the sticky side when it gets you know when it's dry but hey it's not bad this is actually pretty decent it's not constant size it's larger here at the mouth end and it tapers down to the 510 drip tips um, interior here so it's a little bit of constriction but that's not much all right, let's take a look down here at the bottom. We have a adjustable 510 pin, which as you can see here, let's see if we can get it into focus here. It does protrude slightly. Oh, sorry about that. Hit the mic here. As you can see, it does protrude slightly, but it doesn't protrude very much. So, yeah, I yeah, you probably could use this thing on a mech mod uh, or a um, or a hybrid mech mod. So yeah, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. I would feel comfortable using that on there. As you can see on the bottom here, it's uh, designed by BJ, and of course it has the serial number. Mine I have here is 284. All right, so let's take a look at this thing. Let's break this thing apart. Uh, it does come fully apart here. And you unscrew this top piece here from the rest of the base. As you can see, it screws into the base here. The screw threads on these things are, on this thing, is very, very nicely done. Uh, I was very surprised and very pleasantly surprised, I should mention, at how well this thing fit together and the fit and finish of it. Um, even these screws here are not that sharp, so you shouldn't have to worry about. They're a little on the, you know, the 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 get you side. They're almost too sharp, but they're not bad. So I'll put that over there. That's the top piece. Here you have your Pyrex glass. Pretty nice looking piece. Nice and rounded, smooth. Uh, no sharp burrs on here. No straight edges like they just took a. A file or a glass cutter and scored it and cracked it off yet yeah, this has been this has been molded into this position and the mold that they use is pretty damn good too so all right we'll put that down there now you have the next two pieces here this one here is the bottom uh, the bottom section for the glass the glass would fit into it like this so that would go there and this is one of the main things that differentiates the V2 from the V1. The V1 used a rubber vape band, which basically fit around the tank here, uh, the tank base, and you had to move that around in order to change your airflow settings. Um, the V2, this one's got a metal band. And as you can see on the inside in here, it has O-rings in there to give it just enough friction on this stainless steel base piece here to ensure that your when you set this thing with whatever airflow you decide to do it's going to stay there now when you set this airflow you have one of two choices you can either go with a, a four hole uh, airflow design which is two on the front two on the back facing the coils or you can go with just ah yeah there we go all right now now you decided not to move all right there we go like so two holes one here and one over here you or you can go with two one here blowing directly onto the coil or one over here 
blowing directly onto the coil. Now these are roughly about two millimeters, maybe two and a quarter, two and a half millimeters, something like that. Um, actually, let's see. <clears throat> we got the calipers here, so uh, two point five, two point six, two point seven, two point eight millimeters in diameter. So, yeah, pretty large. It will give you a nice amount of airflow in here. Um, it, it's a little bit on the restrictive side for mouth to lung, but it's not bad. Uh, I've actually tried to do mouth to lung on other tanks that just basically felt like you were sucking a golf ball through a garden hose. I actually had one that even tasted like I was trying to suck a softball through a garden hose. Yeah, if you're going to dig that one for a crazy okay now if you look down here into the deck let's see if we can get this thing to focus if we can get some light in there you can just barely make out I think the velocity deck posts in there uh, you got one on this side and one on this side well the way this thing works here is that when you have your coil in here like so uh, one coil here, one coil here. This here hole will be blowing directly onto the coil. And the same with this one over here. It'll be blowing directly onto the coil. So you don't have to worry about airflow over your coil. It will, it will be there when it's needed. So, okay, so let's take the base of this deck off. This is the pretty much the bell housing here or the evaporation chamber atomization chamber whichever you want to call it now you see these uh, four sets of two holes here two here two here two here two here well these here are where your juice comes in from the tank which is sitting up here juice comes in here flows in here and comes down into this section here on the outside this fills up with uh, with juice and it goes underneath of the build deck here and it comes up into the build deck to your wicking through these four little holes right here. Okay? And it wells up a little bit in here and your coil's wicking then sucks it up into the coil. Okay? So, yeah, let's put this over here to one side here. Like that. Okay, now this is your build deck. The nice thing about this is, is you can saw the coils over here. If you're lazy and you don't want to go out there and build your own coils, or if you're not feeling comfortable doing that, you can take this velocity deck here out, put it to one side, and use one of the pre-built coils. Now, this is a single o OCC stainless steel uh, deck. Let's take a look in here and see what this looks like. All right, now come, this comes with some O-rings in here, so you have to be careful when you take these things, take this out. You don't want to lose those O-rings because that could ruin your day. All right, so let's move that there. Let's move that there. Okay. Now, as you can see, this is your, build, your RBA build deck. This is your pre-made coil. Okay? Now... You can see the similarities between the two. Alright. There's... Yeah. Like that. Okay. See how the juice flow, the juice comes up? Yeah. Just like that. So we'll bring this up here. And there is the first thing that you'll notice. The cotton comes here. And there's plenty of airflow underneath the coil here. This comes over here like so, and there's plenty of cotton down in here to cover up these juice flow holes. Okay, so you can get a good idea how Steam Crave is basically uh, suggesting that you should wick this for optimal performance with it. So, like so, yeah. Okay, 
All right, so that's the single coil. The dual coil looks just basically exactly the same as this, except that it's got two coils in there. Um, basically the same wicking method as well. We'll get more into that in a few minutes when we do the actual build out on this thing. All right, so we'll put that in there and put that over to one side. Take a quick look at the dual coil version here. will come out thank you and yeah I'm not going to take it out of the cellophane you can see through here pretty much dual coils like so oops there we go let me help to get it back on the, get it on screen if I for you to see so there's your dual coils and you can see here same thing with the other one there's a hole that runs from one side to the other side underneath of the coil where there is no wicking at all in its well, except for this one little errant piece here, but uh, once you put a little bit of juice on there, you can paint that right into place, but yeah, you get a good idea as to exactly how you, you're you going to, we're going to be building this thing, so, all right, uh, let me put this away here, and then we can get the last two extraneous pieces out of the way, put them over there. All right, so what we're going to be working on today, we're going to be putting a, a dual coil build in here, just like I showed you just before. Uh, this is a velocity deck. It has the, this is your positive pin here. This is your negative pin, which is milled directly into the block of metal that makes up this base. Okay, so yeah, take a look at that one last time. So, all right, let's open up these grub screws so you can see exactly what they are. These things here are fantastic. They are absolutely buttery smooth, yet again. I know, I use that phrase a lot, but it's appropriate. What's more smoother than butter? You know, seriously. It's all smooth, which is exactly what these things are. As you can see, there's the gut. There's the grub screws. I gotta keep remembering to keep this thing on cam in camera range. All right, let's open this up here and open this one up here as well. Because we're going to be doing a dual coil, we're going to need all four of these post holes. Okay, so there we go. Now. Let's make some coils. Okay, I have to apologize for the cut there. What I did was originally I was going to be making these coils. 10 wraps, 24 gauge, uh, Cantal A1. I was going to use these coils, but I found around a 3.5 millimeter inside diameter coil uh, mandrel. And I found out when I got halfway through doing the recording that <laughs> these were too big. They would not fit in there without shorting out against the inner wall of the atomization chamber here when I slipped this on, like so, okay? So, yeah, that's the reason why you got that cut just then. As you can see, here's the coil. It I had it in there and it was all nicely mounted and everything else and well it was shorting out so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do this the old-fashioned way cut and start all over again so I'm gonna move that up there and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull off a length of 28 gauge stainless steel 316 L and yeah like so. There you go. See? And we're going to... Actually, I need a little more than that. I want to make sure I have enough here. We're going to be doing eight wraps on the 3.5 millimeter mandrel as opposed to the 10 wraps of the Cantal A1. So let me move these coils the heck out of the way here since they're now pretty much extraneous. I may still be able to make use of those coils, so we'll see. All right, so we got my wire here, and it's springing all over the place. So I'm going to 
fold this in half. This is going to be pretty. This is going to be a pretty big piece of wire to use for for eight wraps. But I'd rather turn waste a little bit of wire than not have enough and then waste the whole major piece. So we're going to be doing eight wraps now because this stuff is so thin. I'm going to be doing actually nine wraps. The one of those nine wraps is going to be what I call a give back wrap. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. So I'm going to put that on there. 3.5. That's one. That's the give back. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight, nine. I'm going to bring this around, leave that there for a minute. That's nine. And I'm going to bring this a little bit more, about um, 90 degrees more. So that way it will be in place. Actually, this is going to be around nine and a half wraps there. Okay, so we got nine and a half wraps on here. 28 gauge stainless steel 316 L flip this over now you see how you see how that works there how that first coil is a little bit on the janky side all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off like so so that way I have a nice perfect little coil there and take my needle nose pliers you can use regular pliers if you got them. Needle nose came in with the coil master kit that I'm using here. And now you see how that springs apart like that? Now what we're going to do is we're just going to fold that over until we get both of the legs going in the same direction. Like so. Okay, we'll put that over there. So that's now eight and a half wraps, roughly. That goes there. That goes there. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. And one give back. 90 degrees that way and um, bring that around like so so now we have nine wraps there flip this over like so take the give back wrap back pull on the wire so we get it all nice and snug and formed up cross the legs over a little bit so that way they're both coming in the same direction Okay, so let's get this thing started and actually do this. This time this should fit in here. This is a much smaller coil. So there shouldn't be any issues. And once again, like I said, when that when the screw starts to bite into the leg you're going to see this piece here deflect this way. When it deflects, that's when you know you've caught it. And it will stop moving when it's fully caught. Like that. Alright, so we'll turn this around like so. And... I got butter roll over my fingers tonight here. Tighten this into place like this. And done. Clip. Clip. That's done. So let's take this coil. Gonna pull it up so that way the coil sorry about taking that off of, off camera 
See how the coil is right there in between this two? I'm going to bring that up just a little bit and try and bring it out. Uh, that might be a little too much. Just bring it up. And straighten it out like so. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Okay. Time for the second coil. I just do it with the wire now. Hello? Oh, I already made the coil. Duh! <laughs> okay. I'm losing it tonight. I am definitely losing it. I made the coil up already. And I forgot to open that screw up. Always helps. All right, so we're going to put that in here like so. Come on, baby. There you go. Put that in there like that. Push that in as far as it will go. Like that. Tighten it down. Wait for the leg deflection. And move that into place there. up a little bit more. It's got to come out a touch. Yeah, that should do it. Do, 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 do. Okay. It's going to come down just a little. Out, bring it down, pull it out, bring it down. Eh, good enough for government work. And that's got to actually get centered over here a little bit more, like that. That's not centered. There we go. Center. Good enough for government work. All right, let's see what this can reads out as. 0.51. Cool. Actually, let's leave that on. Put this back on. 0.51. No shorts. That's a good thing. 0.48 now. Okay. Let's get the tweezers here and fire these coils and get them into check for any kind of hot spots oh yeah that's like 
like so. And there we go. Bingo. Look at that. Nice. Glowing from the inside out. Nice and steady. Cool those coils down a little bit. See, it's still coming coming down some. Remember, this is stainless steel, so this is going to be a temp control um, build. So, 0.55. Point five two. Point five oh. Not bad. All right. So let's wick this beastie up. Uh, yeah. My little dental probe tool. I love that thing. Makes. Makes wicking so much easier. And we just pull off the outer hard skin here. Oh. Eh. Close enough for government work. That whole area section, that whole section there is going to get snipped off anyway put that over there grab the skizzers snip snip now this is a little trick that I have that I'd use here I make that little arrowhead and then I just roll this up like so actually do a little bit of a twist in here and that little arrowhead that I had there as you can see now makes for a much finer point and it makes it a little bit easier to slip it through now I always twist it when I go in, when I'm putting it in it makes life so much easier Trying to get it in there. Okay, that's good. Okay, oopsie. Next one. Yes, all these noises you're hearing in the background there, that's because I have the window open here. Because it is such a bloody hot night here in North Jersey that if I didn't have this window open right now, I'd be dying. Okay. Oh, come here, you. Come here. Oh. Mm. Okay. Pull off that hard sheet. Pull off that hard sheet there. Straighten it out. Snip, snip, like I said, this whole piece here, this whole end here is going to get snipped off anyway, so it's not like I'm wasting a lot of it. I've got so much of this cotton sitting here, it's not even funny. Okay, give it a nice little roll, a little bit of a twist. Feed. Twist. That's not bad. Okay, now, when you're snipping the cotton off, the landmark that I use is right here. That edge. So I put my scissors right there and snip 
and tidy this up a little bit here like so close enough for government work and snip like so now you see how this cotton compresses here you see that white line that bright white line right there that is not going to wick well at all so what you have to do is you have to get in here with something now this is where this dental probe tool comes in handy one of the reasons why I like it so much because I can actually get in here and pick apart that any clumps that are in there like so and get it all nice and fluffed out there you go you see how it compressed it again so we're just going to pull that out and we're going to do the same for this side over here and that will that'll be good all right so we're going to take this piece here and we're going to just push the cotton in like so come on Yep. This is probably, to get this right, this is probably the most time consuming part of the whole operation here. And it is also the most important part of the operation because you need to have this air channel directly underneath of that coil. But this cotton has to go right over those wicking holes. Actually, that cotton could probably be a little bit shorter. Yeah, let's, let's hack that back a little bit more. Just a touch. There we go. Remember to tease it out after you snip it. Anytime you use a pair of scissors on cotton wicking make sure you get in there with something like a toothpick or a metal probe like this or even a ordinary flat bladed jeweler screwdriver get in there and fluff out that wicking because if you do not fluff out that wicking, that wicking is going to not work properly. Now I'm sure there's other people out there who are got a lot more hours flying hours with aroma misers that are probably looking at me doing this right now and going oh my god uh that thing's gonna get choked off well believe it or not it's not that will now turn around and soak up a lot of juice and it will wick very well okay ever since i got ever since i got this sorry i was just reaching for my seb Ever since I got this deck, this is the way I have been rocking this. Put some right here in the middle. Some right here in the middle. Oopsie. 
It won't go to waste. So this is all juice flow area here. There we go. Excellent. Let's see if it's firing. We got vapor. Yep. Okay, so we're gonna put in a little bit more. This is a DIY juice that I have here. Um, yeah, there we go. Last check. 0.55, I just, it's coming down. 0.53. Yeah, I just fired it, so it's going to be a little on the high side. About 0.51 should be about where this is going to come into its own. Put that on like so. Tighten that on. Airflow ring. Tank glass retaining ring, tank glass, tank top. And we're just going to tighten that down. Aromamizer, there we go. And yeah, there we go. I'll just make the airflow adjustment here. Because I like rocking it with all four of the holes. One, two, three, four, open. All right, so. Now that we know that this is going to work, whoopsie, <laughs> decided to stay in there. Oh, sorry about that, I had it off camera. And Make sure we got that air hole in there. Because without that air hole, this is not going to work at all the way it should. And you see, you can even use your tweezers in here to place your cotton and stuff. I just like that dental probe because it is just so much easier. I, I, I find it so much easier to work with. All right, so I'm not going to go putting in a whole heck of a lot in here. Considering the fact that this thing will hold six mils of juice, I'm only going to put in like maybe three or four mils of juice, something like that. There we go, three mils of juice, that's about it. And we'll put this on here like so. Tighten it on. Now we should see bubbles coming up. Oh, massive amounts of bubbles. There we go. Mmm, juicy. Okay. Sorry about going off camera for a second there, but I just wanted to grab a mod. Now I this is this is my old E-Leaf iStick 50. This is not temperature control, but I just want to see. Okay. 32 watts, 0.5 ohms. Let's see. Hmm. It works. Okay, let's head on back up topside and uh, let's talk about this and vape it a little bit and we'll see what's happening. All right, see you topside. 
Okay, everybody, I'm glad to see you made it back up here from down below decks. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, the Aroma Miser RDTA version 2. I have it sitting on my little leaf here. Um, I blew a cloud with a little tiny cloud with this thing before. I'm not going to blow it now because I want to put this thing onto a temp control rig. Um, K Fun version 5 clone this is going to be coming up for review uh, in about a week or two I'm going to put that onto my e-leaf iStick 200 watt here and this way we can rock this in temp control and let me take the resistance lock off Point four nine ohms. Now it's reading point five one. Okay. I first put this on. I'm getting a point four nine ohms, and then as soon as I go to lock it into place, it registers point five one. Okay. All right. Now I presently have this set at twenty eight watts, which I'm going to bring this up to. Uh, let's see. Let's bring it up to 35 and try it there. Actually, no. Let me bed this in a little bit lower. Yeah, 25. 25 watts should do. Let's bed this in at 25 watts. 410 degrees, 0.51 ohms. Let's take a vape on it and see what it looks like. Hmm, not bad. A um, little on the airy side. So let's close this off. Let's close these air holes off halfway. Let's try it again. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was not a dry hit. That was the flavor in this thing. The flavor in this thing is so concentrated. <coughs> oh. Wow. Whew. Yeah, when I first got this, I it was this and my K-Fun version 4. Okay? That's what I had here. That was my all-day vape. Then when this came in, I started working with this and started using this as my all-day vape. And I'm telling you, um, this thing here, the flavor, is so intense. It's not even funny. All right. Let's bring this up. Let's get this up to about 35 watts. Mm, there we go. 35 watts. 0.49 ohms. How did this thing get over into the M's? Into the memory positions. Titanium. Stainless steel. Okay, it's reading at 0.51 and the rest of them are reading it at 0.49. I don't know why this... 200 watt is doing this, but it is. This thing needs a firmware upgrade. Elif, please, if you're listening, can you get an up a firmware update for this thing out before August 8th? Please? Alright. Let's try this. 0 0.51, 35 watts, 410, stainless steel. Let's see what we got. Yeah, let's try that a little bit. I got the fans going here. Let me shut the fans off for a second. I'm sorry about the fans, but if I don't have them on, 
I'm gonna be dying of sweat here. Yeah. That's all for maximum airflow on this thing. It's not bad. The cloud production on this thing isn't bad. I gotta put the fans back on, excuse me. I have to have these things on, at least on low. Otherwise, you will see me melt kind of like the Wicked Witch of the West when she got rained on. So, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay. I really like this tank. I really, really like this tank. My God, I'm telling you, the flavor on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I have been rocking at 39, 40, 39 watts, 45 watts. I've even had this thing up to about 50 watts. And I'm telling you, the flavor in this thing is so concentrated, it's not even funny. Um... With the wicking done just right on this thing, you can actually you you can taste the difference. Now, as I told you before, I have been playing with this KFON Five clone. This beats out the KFON Four. I'll so far. In my testing, this beats out the KFON 4. This thing beats out the KFON 4 also. And the KFON 4 is my, my benchmark for flavor. This thing's flavor, the amount of flavor that this thing produces, surpasses the KFON 4 by at least a factor of 5. It will depend upon how you wick it and how you uh, coil this. This thing can chuck some freaking clouds like you wouldn't believe. But even at high cloudage volumes, the flavor on this thing is just so intense. It's not even funny. I've rocked this thing with my red berries, which is a strawberry raspberry um juice it's you can taste the raspberries in there you can taste the strawberries it's it's like biting into fresh strawberries and raspberries this beats the kfon floor on it um my orange popsicle which is a creamy base it tastes like biting into that standard summer staple of the ice cream truck which is the orange popsicle which has got the orange ice on the outside and the the ice cream on the inside tastes just like i was biting into an orange popsicle my soho which is my tobacco vape uh absolutely delicious I mean, oh my God, delicious. My, well, here it is. The Southern Raspberry Sweet Tea. Okay. Southern Raspberry Sweet Tea. Almost as good as the, my tea that I have here, but that's a milk tea. That's a fruit flavored tea. It tastes like, you, you can taste the raspberry in it and the tea it's uh, this thing just puts out the 
the flavors so damn much more intensely than anything I've ever had before or since to this point. It's not even funny. I mean, look, I look for the bad things in tanks, in mods, because that's my job. That's my job here. I find out the problems that they have and I report them back to you. So that way you can make an informed decision and if you decide to purchase that tank, you'll have some knowledge of what's going on before you get it so you can adjust your vaping style to the tank or adjust the wicking and the coiling to suit you. I don't have anything wrong with this thing. I cannot find anything wrong with this aroma miser. I mean, if you can classify too much flavor as being something wrong, then yeah, okay, that's what's wrong with this. Too much flavor. Seriously, I'm not kidding. Uh, that's it. Hold on, you'll see. That's into the fan. That's with that fan blowing this way and the fan over there blowing this way. I recommend it. That's all I can say. This thing is dynamite. I... I I have not have been able to have a bad vape with this at all. Right from the get Well, I can't say that. Not right from the get-go. The first set of coils I put in here, uh, let's put it this way. They were less than stellar and they were, um, it was actually an, oh my God, I think I'm doing something wrong here. Yeah. I went back to square one started playing with this thing on wattage mode the the vape coming out of this can be just a little bit hot once you get like over 30 35 watts between 25 and 30 watts for this child at least it's the 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 temperature wise it's great the cloud production is phenomenal under 20 somewhere between 20 and 25 watts something like that it's cold it really is cold you need to run this about 30 32 watts somewhere around there 32 watts is pretty much is about the sweet spot it's not too cold. It's not too hot. You get good cloud production and the flavor is, oh my God, out of this fucking world. Okay? Straight plain language here. Yeah. That's with two fans and this thing just starting to get broken in. And like I said, the flavor on cheesecakes, which I absolutely adore. Um, my che 
red berry vanilla cheesecake. Okay. My red berry vanilla cheesecake. 120 mils. I went through this thing in a week, a week and a half. Yeah. That's what's in here right now. That's what's in the Seb. The last of my red berry ch uh, vanilla cheesecake. I like cheesecake. What can I tell you? In this thing. Mmm. O M F -ing G. That's all I can say. I mean, when I started using this aroma miser, I started picking up nuances in the flavor profiles of juices that I had made previously that I never picked up in the K-Fun before. And the K-Fun up until this point, my K-Fun 4 up until this point, was my standard for flavors, for checking out juices. Seriously. Not drippers, the K-Fun 4. Because I never had a dripper that was good enough. Beats it, hands down. I can't say anything more. I really cannot say anything more about this. So, yeah. Double thumbs up recommendation from me. Of course, if you're going to go out and spend your hard-earned money, uh, check out and listen to some other reviewers on what they think about this. Uh, unless they're a bunch of lying sacks, they're going to pretty much tell you the same thing I'm telling you. Um, yeah, if you, if you want a simple tank, a dual coil tank that puts out flavor comparable to a dripper, uh, that will put out clouds that will give you, oh my God, flavor like you have never experienced before. Your tongue is going to be going into orgasmic spasms over what it's getting across it, yeah, get this tank. Get this tank. That's all I'm going to say. And that's it. So with that, I am going to wish you all a very good night. While I sit here trying to edit this thing and get this thing out tonight, you have yourself a great one. Stay cool. Stay hydrated. Please don't need your dropping. Seriously, this, this hot weather, it's, it literally can be a killer. Okay? So, take care. God bless. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind be ever at your back. May the Lord hold you in the hollow of his hand and may you be in heaven a half an hour before the devil knows you're dead. Take care, folks. I'm just going to sit back here and vape out. Ciao.